Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. Super excited to see you guys today uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I want to thank everybody for the birthday wishes and the cards that you sent me. Um, Janie sent me some stuff. Tracy sent me stuff. Alicia. Um, so many thoughtful people. Stephanie. So I want to thank all of you guys um, for the birthday wishes and the birthday cards. You guys are awesome. Um, and a surprise came to me the other day. Arteza had reached out to me and um, liked the review that I had done on their vinyl not too long ago and said they wanted to send me these watercolor paints to try out. So I do have here in front of me this very large, large box of 60 watercolor um, paints, which we're going to try out today. They also sent to me the watercolor paper which is here and it's 14 sheets of their expert watercolor paper and this is super heavy duty it's 140 pounds so very thick um, 9 inches by 12 inches so you can cut it down if you want of their um, expert watercolor paper and what I've done is this paper has two sides it has your traditional rough side. I don't know if you guys can see the texture there. And then on the back side, it is smooth. So I've already stamped out this nice image of um, this little cabin in the woods. This is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. But I thought this gives us a lot of area to kind of color in and see what we think about it. Hi, Terry. Tracy. I just gave you guys a thank you for sending me birthday cards. Um, and I stamped those out with VersaFine Claire ink because this is a, a waterproof ink once it's dried. So, hi, Nikki. I will take rainy Florida weather over cold Pennsylvania weather. <laughs> All right, so we're using the Arteza watercolor paper, and we're going to try out the um, watercolors. And I also, just to kind of experiment, want to compare it to my Gonzai Tombai watercolors. I think that's how you pronounce it. These are Japanese watercolors. And I also have off to the side here my Peerless watercolor papers. All right. Hi, D. Hi, Jen. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Spirit Junkies. Hi, Anne. Wow, you guys are awesome. Hi, Renee. My birthday was yesterday, Nikki. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, Nikki. Um, so the peerless ones, all I've done is just kind of put them on these little three by five note cards. So I'm pro probably only going to be using a couple of each colors, but we'll see what we get here. And I just want to compare like how the colors look and how the um, consistency of these paints are. Now, here's the awesome news. We are super, super close to 7,000 subscribers. So anything you guys can do to spread the word to get us some more subscribers. And Arteza has said they are going to sponsor the next giveaway. And they are going to send a lucky winner um, some of these watercolors. I think it's like a 24 pack. Don't quote me on that. But they are going to send you guys um, some of these watercolors. So keep on sharing. Let's get some more subscribers. And then we'll do a giveaway here. And Arteza will ship the prize. And yes, they said it is available to us as well as UK, um, because they're going to handle the shipping. So they have a UK based office. So if you are in the UK, you are also eligible for the drawing. All right. Hi, Carolyn. Carolyn says she's expecting snow tonight. Hi, Jen. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Tracy, I'll show you the peerless ones. Thank you, D. All right, so I'm going to get to painting here, and I have a couple of, I have stuff everywhere. So I have a, you know, your traditional water color brush, so the water is in the barrel here. I have some regular brushes. I have my paper towel, and then I have a little palette here that I will squeeze some of the paint in, and then I have some water off to the side in a bucket for you guys. Now, yes, this one stamped a double stamp. I lifted the stamp block and then almost dropped it. So it's not as clear, but I think it'll, it'll work fine. And I stamped on the smooth side of the Arteza 
paper. So I'm going to just do real quick. Let's start with the Peerless. So Peerless watercolors are sold in a pack. They were very appealing to me because I saw them at a uh, stamping show or scrapbook show. And here's the pack. It's called a bonus pack. And I want to say they were, I don't know, somewhere around $20. But the pigment is on these tiny little cards, which makes it cool if you want something, you know, if you have a a tiny bit of space, not a lot of space, and um, you want to try out watercoloring. What um, is different about these is um, they're 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 named on here, but they're not named on the actual cards. Um, and and you just pull that pigment off the card. So I'm just kind of looking at the colors. I'm sorry, I don't know what the names are. I'm just gonna pull some greens out of here. See if I can get some browns and grays, maybe a little bit of blue. Some more green. There's a blue. And these are very transparent. Um, so you'll see when I put the color down um, that what they look like. So we're going to do these just really super quick here. And I think I'm just going to use a small brush and do these real quick. Hello, Kiki. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, Jen. Hoping I get to see everybody's stuff. So we're going to do the peerless ones. I'm just going to do these in the bottom corner here real quick. Nothing fancy. And all you do for these is you just take your paintbrush and go right to the card and you pull that color off. Oh, that's super dark brown. We're not going to use too much of that. Way too dark. I'm hoping I can uh, paint this pretty quickly here. Luckily, Blue Knight has made these um, stamps so pretty that it doesn't take very much to get them colored in. That's a super dark brown. Let me find a lighter brown to tone that down a little bit. So I like this for if I'm going to be doing like traveling, you know, when I go to the shore house or I know um, when Leah we used to go to dance, you know, I could just throw these in the car and there's, there's really no cleanup. I mean, you could just take like a water brush and paint real quick on the go. Now, you guys know I am not an artist, um, so I'm not using these in the, the artist's traditional sense of doing watercoloring here. So I'm sorry if you are an artist and you're um, looking at me like I'm a bumbling idiot here. Yes, I am a stamper and a card maker, and I am just dabbling here when it comes to watercoloring. I mean, I'd love to learn more about watercoloring. Let's see here. Sharon says, I have stamps that look like that interested in what you do. Hi, Janie. Janie sent me a beautiful pack of different colored uh, cardstock, mirror card. I was um, super surprised to open that up. I'm just making a mess right now, Janie. I'm a hot mess. Hot mess. Just taking some browns here and kind of filling in this log cabin. Too much water there. Hi, Anne-Marie from France. All right, so the advantages to using the Peerless cards is, again, um, they're light, they're transparent, they're easy to use. The disadvantage is, I don't know the names of the colors unless you would la label them, I guess, when you when you first get them, which I did not do. Um, I'm just kind of looking at the colors here. The pack that I have, I know they have a whole bunch more colors out there, but the pack that I have is called, oh, that's way too dark. It's called the bonus pack. And it's just like a bright combination of different um, rainbow colors. Hey, Melanie. So it's just a variety 
of colors here. But you can see once you lay the color down, you put some water on it, it reactivates it just like your traditional watercolors would do. Um, I'm going to give this a dark red kind of roof color here. And they're very, very transparent. If you are into very loose water colorings and, um, you know, like flowers and things like that, very loosey-goosey, you like that, that color to kind of spread around, that's what this watercolor kind of reminds me of. Let me get some greens down and then we can move on from this cabin. Hello, Jenny. Janie, I am not the funny one. My sister is the funny one. I'm the more serious one. And I'll do a more formal video of these um, paints. I just wanted to try them out for you guys and show you what the difference is between what I already have and what some of you guys might already have in your arsenal and see how they compare. Um, I can tell you this watercolor paper is beautiful. It's soaking up that color immediately. Um, if I need to rehydrate it and move the color along, no problem there. So in terms of watercolor paper, this is really nice stuff. It's super thick. So I don't have to worry about any kind of warping. I'm just grabbing different colors of uh, green here. Thank you, Kiki. I knew you would agree. For those of you that don't know, Kiki is my funny sister. All right, so that's the, the first cabin used in Peerless here. You know, of course, I could go in later and do some more detail work to it, but I don't want to keep everybody on here all night. So that's using the Peerless. Not bad. Thank you, Jenny. But again, very translucent, very loosey loosey uh, watercolor here. You have to keep your water to control the um, consistency and the, the um, depth of the color, the pigment there. So the less amount of water that you use, the, the darker the paint is going to be, the, the pigmentation of it. The, the more water you use, the lighter it's going to be. It's going to spread out a little more there. Okay, so that's using the Peerless. And again, it's it's a, a very translucent watercolor. So you can clearly see the stimmage underneath that, underneath that uh, ink there. So very light, translucent, simple watercolor is what I would say. I'm going to move in real quick to the Gonzai Tombai. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I used my coupon. Um, this is a Japanese uh, watercolor company. Again, it's all written in Japanese, so I do not know the names of the colors. And it's all in pots already, so all you do is just um, go in and reactivate the colors you think you're going to want. So I just have a little spray bottle here, and I'm going to spray some of the greens. Or not. Not spray anything. Let me just take my bigger brush here. Oh, I forgot to do the sky. Well, that's all right. We'll do the sky on this other one here. Jenny. 
Jenny says hi from Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Roberta. We are just doing some simple painting here, Roberta. Now, the Gonzai Tombai paints I find are um, a little thicker than the peerless ones, so they're not as translucent. They still have that fun watercolor effect where the more water you add, the looser the paint gets. It's not as transparent. So I feel like with these paints, there's a little bit more control. In my opinion, you know, if you're somebody that doesn't like that real loose watercoloring look and you, you want more of that coloring look, that more control in it, um, that's where these paints come in. And I know they come in a variety of different colors, and I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think you can find um, replacement pots if your colors run out. Janie, I have some of those to a sketch kit. What are you talking about, Janie? The paints? The stamps? I'm just going in with some different colors of green. Now, if you want that color to move a little more, you wet the paper first, and then the watercolor will go wherever you wet that paper. It kind of what's called blooms, where it moves around. And that gives you more of that watercolor painterly look. So putting all this water down where I want all this to be more green. And then I get my brush loaded, and then that green moves around a little more freely. I'm going to do some of that in the sky. I'm going to switch to a little bit larger brush here. Hello, Jenny's Garden. Melanie's in Kentucky too, she says. Now I'm just going to wet the top part of this. I'm going to try to do like a, a sky with this. A little bit of a technique difference. Oops, got some green in our sky. This watercolor paper is really... I like this watercolor paper. I will tell you that. It's really nice. Really grabbing that water and holding on to it. All right, let's put a little bit of blue in here and see what we get. This is like a little bit of a periwinkle blue, but you can see as soon as that pigment hits that, it starts to spread out. And that's because we've already put the water down. Hi, Sharon. And what's fun about stamping and painting over your stamped images is someone really, you know, appreciates the fact that you took the time to do this. Well, you hope your recipient takes the time to appreciate that. It's very freeing. It's very soothing. And you don't have to be a great artist. Somebody else, a wonderful artist, took the time to draw this stamp out. And it's very sketchy kind of looking. And all we're doing is just coloring it in. I mean, this is something that a novice can do. You don't have to be a professional at doing this. And you're just coloring it in. You're just putting some color down. And if you don't like where that color is, if it's too dark for you, you put some, you put some uh, extra water on there. You take a little paper towel and you dab it out of the way. Hey, Deb. All right, so I'm going to just lay some color down on the roof here, the side of this cabin. I expect children to come running down the steps any minute now because I ordered them a pizza. Thank you. 
I don't know if I have a gray. Let me see. I think I just have like a black. I'll try to water that down. Yeah, it's black. And all I'm doing for this cabin, just to give it a little more rustic look, I'm not paying attention to the details of the lines or anything. I'm just going in there with some different colors of brown ink and just kind of shading them where I think the darker brown would be. Throwing some lighter brown in there. Putting some darker brown out in the trees. We can always go in when this is dried and watercolors always dry back. So they dry back a little lighter than what you originally see. So we can always go back in later and add more color. And if you think you have too much, you take a wet brush and you move that color along. It's very forgiving. All right, and this paint too, as it's drying, is getting very, very, um, it's very getting, uh, it's, it's getting lighter and it's becoming more translucent. Like I can see that the colors are drying back and we're gonna, just gonna wet this whole area down here and put some grass in. Oop, too dark. So I'm just going to take that with a wet brush and spread it out. Okay. All right, so we have two different watercolors here. Now we've done this one with the Gonzai Tombai. We've done this one with the Peerless. Um, and you can see the Peerless has pretty much all dried now. It looks very intense, very dark. This one's a little more dried back. The Gonzai Tombai. I feel like I had a little bit more control with the Gonzai Tom Tombai ones, these, because they're a little creamier. All right, so now the fun part. We're going to get out some of these Artezas. So let me tell you a little bit more about these Artezas. And again, I will do a more in-depth video of them. But they sent me a box of 60, and they come in tubes. So with the tubes, you want to use a palette or palette paper or something like that. And I'm just going to, again, just grab a couple of those colors that I think we would use here. So here's a nice gray and what I like is on the box it tells you here all of the colors down at the bottom here it tells you light fastness so the more plus signs are um, the more light fastness it is meaning how long it should last and maintain that color um, without fading transparency is how transparent or, or opaque it is um, and then it tells you the names of the colors and it has those ratings on there. Again, if you're somebody that is more of an artist, these are um, premium colored watercolors and these tubes will last you forever. Um, so the plus is that you're getting a large tube of paint. So once you invest in these, it tells you here you're getting 12 milliliters of paint. It tells you the color, the light fastness, the opacity of it, and the color code. So this is color code A282. If I go back to the box here, I can see that that is not in order. It's over here. And it's gray, but it is listed. So I do like all the colors are listed. 
Um, and then you just take this tiny little tube of, or this large tube of paint, and you squirt out a tiny little bit into your paint palette. Now, I got the a set of four or five paint palettes for just a few dollars at Michael's, guys. And I use them. The kids use them. They're great. So there's a little bit of gray there. I'm going to try to find some greens and blues. And I think what I'm going to like about these is, number one, the value. You know, they're in the tubes. I know that they're there. It's not like they're going to go bad or dry out or crack. Um, they're going to last me quite a while. And I have the names of everything. But I think because they are cream-based until you mix them with water, I'm going to like the fact I'm going to have more control over how this paint goes down. So we'll find out here in a second. We get some, some browns out here. And this is a big variety of colors. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that they reached out to me to do this for you guys. Oh, I wish I could take some Bob Ross classes. That would be awesome. Maybe one day when I get to meet Michael Jackson, I'll go meet Bob Ross. My happy little trees. <laughs> Tiny little trees, happy little trees. I'm going to put happy trees all over. These are definitely paints that I'm going to tell the kids they are not touching. All right. And I know these are, are not super expensive. They did give me a code, so I will look that code up and link it. But again, if you're a subscriber, they're going to allow us to do a giveaway so that somebody can win a set. All right, so I'm going to use the same brushes here. Let's do, let's do the sky first. Let's wet that sky. Roberta, I'll put the link um, at the end of this. It'll take me a few minutes to upload this because we're live right now, so I can't put any links on there um, of what they are. And I think that they, I think there's a discount code, but I'll double check the email. All right, so I'm just doing that. And then I have some, some blue here. Let me see if I can bring this in where you guys can see it a little better. Ooh, I wish I, I should have told you guys the names of the colors here. It's a lot of blue. Very bright. Oh, yeah. Very turquoisey. Very pretty. Reminds me of, like, the Caribbean Ocean. We're going to water that down. All right. Well, the paints are very reactive. Very nice pigment colors here. Wow. Janie, I think they're asking if the paints are uh, costly. Okay. I'm very surprised at how bright that is. All right. Let's go down here and go to the other end of the spectrum and do the grass. Just watering this down. Lots of water. And I have a couple of different colors here for the grass. Oh, that's too bright. Way too bright. Lime green. Ooh. We'll see how this dries back. We'll darken that up a little bit. There we go. All right, we'll take some of that same medium green and go up here and do the trees. I have not watered the trees, so I'm just taking the regular brush with the paint on there, and this paint is gliding very smoothly 
across the paper without, I feel like there's a little more control of the paint. Now here I watered it down a little more so it's a little more loose. Again, if you're looking for that traditional watercolor look, you just add more water and you can get that very easily out of these paints. It's like a, it's like a combination of like a watercolor and an acrylic paint. It has this control like an acrylic paint and a little bit more opacity than a watercolor paint. But once it goes down and dries, it dries like a watercolor paint. And it has that movement like a watercolor paint does. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. This is like a olive green. It is drying back too, so it's lightening up, which is good. Paints are reactivating with the water and re uh, moving around, so that's good. They're not just stuck there. That was one of the issues I have with those with all the watercolor markers is once those watercolor markers are down, um, it's like they're, they're there, they're not moving at all, but these paints are moving along very nicely. All right, let's try a little bit of the cabin here. That's like a super dark brown. I'm mixing some colors on the palette too. I keep forgetting to bring this in so you guys can see. So here I have some of that brown and then a tiny bit of that green. Mixes nicely, blends nicely. Where'd I burn the grass? Well, maybe they were having a barbecue and they burned the grass. I should have grabbed another darker brown. Let's see what I can do here with this one. All right, I'm going to find another brown here because we need a little bit darker brown in our uh, cabin there. Last one, right? Okay. Sepia. Oh, yeah, that's dark. And I'm going to leave these paints out and let them dry in the palette. 
And when I do the official review for this video or for these paints, we'll see how those paints react when we come back to them in a few days. That's a good idea. We'll put a fire pit in there. See, everything works out when you're being artsy. You're being creative, right? Oh, yeah, this is much darker. Well, I can tell you guys, I'm very pleasantly surprised with these paints. These are not like cheapy quality paints that are, um, you know, very chalky or um, granular. They're very smooth. Um, the colors are very bright. They're drying back. They're mixing well. They're reacting well. I'm very impressed with these. And, and again, I'm not an artist. I'm not. I'm just a stamper. So if you if you are an artist, you know, feel free to put your two cents in there if you're if you're doing. But this is how I would use them in my card making, taking a, a sketched image like this and just putting some color to it. And I'm very, very surprised at how nice these colors are working out. Okay, here comes the little feet. Actually, not so little feet. Xavier is now officially taller than me. And he's in a size 12 and a half sneaker. Men's sneaker. I cannot believe it. My little baby is not a baby anymore. And, he, and he's sure to let me know every day. Mom, I'm taller than you. Mom, I'm taller than you. All right, so let's see here. That's green. Where did we put the gray? Oh, the gray is over here. Okay. What do you guys think? Let's see here. I'm trying to read you guys' comments here. Okay. I want to play with my mink. Oh, yeah. I got to play with the mink machine. Uh, keep an eye out for next week. Um, Mod Squad Challenge. I am the guest designer next week for Creative Vision Stamps. Is a guest designer on Mod Squad Challenge next week. So I will tell you guys, of course, there is some foiling involved. So um, next week's Mod Squad Challenge will have a card featuring Creative Vision stamps, foils, and foilables. So keep an eye on that. And then you'll be have some more fun with your mink. Um, every once I do, what I um, when I am uh, this side of the mat, Nikki, I do use that. However, um, my, my non-stick started to peel a little bit in the corner, so I flipped it over. Um, it's got a little bit of staining in it. So every once in a while, I do do that. I want to show you guys, okay, here's a little bit of a close-up with the Arteza paints. And then we have the Peerless ones down here. I think the Peerless ones are super bright. I'm going to try to water them down. They almost look too bright. <laughs> so let's see if I can reactivate and water those down a little bit. They look a little too over the top. We got a little overzealous with the colors, I think. Let's lift some of that out. So, I mean, they are coming up. Plus, I think it needs a sky. We'll have to go back in later and add a sky. Let's see here. Where's my blue at?
Now our sky is bleeding. The house is on fire. I burnt the house down. Uh, we're going to have a purple sky. Couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to put a sky in there. Now the sky is bleeding. <laughs> Roberta, right? The roof, the roof is on fire. <laughs> Love you guys. You guys are the best. All right, so we were able to put some of that back. All right, the peerless ones are bleeding all over now. They're bleeding all over. I got green coming off over here. I got the red roof coming on. Okay, peerless is bleeding all over. All right, so there's the peerless ones. I mean, clearly very bright, very translucent, very much your traditional watercolor. If you wanted to have that, again, that blooming effect, um, which a lot of people like, um, the peerless ones are nice for that, you know, but I mean, you can do that with anything. You can do that with your reinkers. You can do that with distress inks. Um, so, I mean, that's just a product of, of, of the bleeding, the blooming. That's just the, the, the ink moving around. Um, you don't need any special watercolors to really make that happen. These were the Gonzai Tombai, and you can see as these dried back, they almost have a chalky look to them. They're not as bright. They've dried back. They kind of have this pastel look to them. I know it's hard for you guys to see in the camera, but um, they they did have this this chalky look. I mean, I can see it here more in the in the cabin, in the grass. I mean, it looks okay. It's not bad, but I am, I think I'm very much pleased with the Arteza ones where, yeah, they have some of that blooming where they've spread out, but I feel like the pigment is a lot nicer in the Arteza ones. So there's, you know, you can see the blending in there. If you want more of a blend, you just go in more, with more water. Move that around. Definitely reactivating, but I like how bright the colors are. Yeah, they did dry back a little bit, but they did not dry to a chalky finish. I like that. So I'm very, very impressed in terms of with coloring with these, how nice they are. And like I said, I will do an official review. I'm going to leave these paints in the palette to dry, and we'll go back and try them again, just the Artezas alone. And I'll do maybe some flowering pictures and see how they... Uh, turnout. So, um, so far, very, very impressed with the Artezas. And I, like I said, they sent me a discount code. So I'll post that for you guys. And don't forget, we are trying to get to 7,000 subscribers. We are not that far away. And then Arteza is going to uh, send the winner uh, a, a set of these premium watercolor uh, inks. So there we go, guys. You guys got any questions, any comments? I'm able to see the screen now. Oh, yes, Jenny. I should have did that. I should have made that red into a sunset. It's okay now. And I did it. I stamped it out this way because they're close enough, but far enough away that I can actually cut these down and make them the card fronts. So I think they'll be okay. What do you guys think? Which one do you like better? Comment down below if you like the Peerless one better. Just super bright, red roof. If you like the Gonzai Tombai one, and you don't have to spell the whole thing. You can just put GS for Gonzai Tombai. Or if you like the Arteza one better. They're all a little different. I think they all came out okay, but I can tell you from using them, the Arteza ones came out a little easier for me to paint with not being a, a professional. All right, guys, if you like this video, you can scroll up and give it a thumbs up, and then I'll know you guys like these kinds of videos. You can comment down below with any questions or concerns about any of the products that I used. Again, the stamp set is from Blue Light Rubber Stamps. It's called Little Cabin in the Woods if you want to try it out. 
very neat set. And the ink that I used was the VersaClair Fine Ink, Super Black Ink, and I just let that dry. I didn't heat set it or anything before I started painting. And we want to thank Arteza again for sending these out, and I will um, definitely be doing the drawing. I'm going to say probably, hopefully by next weekend, we'll be able to do the drawing. And it is open to U.S. and U.K. residents because Arteza is going to cover the shipping and send those out to the winner. So if you like this video, like and share so we can get to 7,000 so somebody can win their own set of paints. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, keep on stamping. Bye-bye.